free your mind. Okay, so today I'm going to make these keto coconut naan breads or cocoa nans as I call them. So this is what they turn out like. Uh, I like this size, you can do them whatever size you want uh, but you will have to adjust the, uh, the macros. So that's what they look like to start with. Well, first of all, let's turn this on. Make sure we're on grams. So what you normally do, I'll tell you the ingredients first. Usually use 75 grams of coconut flour, 15 grams of psyllium husk, a quarter of a teaspoon of salt, and three teaspoons or 15 ml of olive oil. Um, the 15 ml of oil, olive oil is basically a, a tablespoon. But, uh, and we need warm water later. What I'm doing, I'm doing a bigger batch and I'm doing it times four, if you will. So it's going to be 300 grams of the coconut flour, 60 grams of psyllium husk, two teaspoons of salt, and 12 teaspoons or four tablespoons of olive oil. Uh, if you want to use coconut oil, you can do. Uh, just make sure it's melted. So, I'm going to use 300 grams of this coconut flour. Just me over there. Right, spot on there. 300 grams. Next we've got the uh, 60 grams of psyllium husk. That's what psyllium husk is. Pour that in there. Got the two tablespoons of salt. It's a uh, red rock salt. Pink rock salt, should I say. Then you mix up these dry ingredients. We'll just make sure you've got a fairly good mix. The mixture's combined. That should be okay. Now I'm going to add the olive oil, which works out at four tablespoons full. One, two, three. All you do then is give it another mix. This stuff's really easy to do. I mean, it must be easy if I can do it. And anyway, since uh, I've been keto, which is about about 14 weeks now, um, I've been sort of doing stuff like this, been baking, cooking things, and. Uh, cauliflower pizzas and god knows what. Right, so that's all combined now. I'll take the scales away. Now all we've got to do now is just get some hot water. Okay, so we've got 29 fluid ounces of hot water out of the kettle. And all you want to do is just add it gradually. You need to put some in to begin with, make it so it's wet enough. What I use, I just use this spatula, and I just chop at it really. It's the easiest way to do it. So up to now, these 29 fluid ounces. I may need more or less. Oh, 
have a feeling it'll probably be in the wall. What you do, you, you're trying to get a, a nice door out of it. it. Smells really nice being coconut flour. Grease. This will uh, give you a bit of work out if you're in isolation at the moment. Right, so I'm going to use all the 29 fluid ounces. I've not said it, the measurement in pints because uh, obviously I'm in the UK and I use UK pints, which is 20 fluid ounces. Whereas in the USA, you use, I think it's 16 fluid ounces. So, so if I were to give you the measurements, you'd be saying the mixture's too runny. And you, you, it doesn't matter what you put in your jug. At the end of the day, you've worked you've work it out. That were my dogs interrupting there. Sorry about that. Right, it's a little bit dry, so I've got another 10 ounces here, which I probably won't use all of it. I'll try and get a, a final total of what I've used. Although it's not rocket science really, it's just, you're just making sure that you've got a, a nice firm door, what's not too wet, not too dry. So, as I said, with this spatula, I'm just basically just chopping it. You just wait to mix it all up. Saves it going all over the place. Right, it still needs a little, little bit more at the bottom. I can feel it being dry there. Right. So it looks like I'm using the almost the whole of the 10 ounces here. You can't really make it too, well you can make it too wet. Coming together nicely now. Make sure you scrape the bottom of the bowl, not the bottom of the barrel. Scrape the bottom of the bowl to make sure you've got all the dry stuff, all the flour. Might look a little bit dry, but it will be fine. Right. <coughs> so there we are. We've I've used about I think it's about 38 ounces, 38 fluid ounces. I think a fluid ounce in America and a few fluid ounce in the UK is the same anyway. Right. Now then, I can stop this running about all the time. Right. So what we do now, we're just basically going to leave it to get cooler because it's, as you can imagine, it's really hot. Just checking the bottom, checking what the door feels like. It's just nice and spongy, it's just right, is that? So, oh, it's just right. So, we'll wait till that cools down. So, all I'm going to do now is put some cellophane around it, some glad wrap, cling film. You name it, whatever it's called, I'm going to put that around it to stop it from drying out. Right, so this is the door now, it's nice and cooled down. All you do is just take a, a piece of it, stick it on some um, parchment paper, grease proof paper, whatever you call it. And all you do basically just 
squeeze down. I will need a knife for this. Not that one, not that one, not that one. That one will do. Okay, so all I'm going to do, yes, not my rolling pin. I do not have a pink rolling pin. Okay, so all you basically do. Just rolling out so you get fairly thin, well, paper thin, I'd say. I usually have a board under here, but I'm trying to work in one area, so just bear with me. I think I will change shortly. What are you basically doing? Just peel that off, put the bowl on there. You can see it, yes. Put your ball on the cut round it. Don't press too hard as you go through the paper. You can use this paper over several times. And there you have one cocoa nan. All you do basically is put it on the hot plate, the griddle, whatever you want to call it and use what's left over. I need a little more. Basically you're just using the same dough over and over, the leftover bits, and you're just adding a little bit to it. So you want to squash it down as much as you can do. And your aim is to be able to fit the circle at about what, five inch or something. Something like that. So you want to be able to fit that, that circle onto here. As I said, they are very thin of these, and that's how I like them. They do puff up slightly. This one's not going to be perfect, but should have moved it over a little bit not being judged on what they look like, you're being judged on the taste. So, just leave them cooking for a short while. And obviously I can only fit three at a time on there. So anyone's what I've got in front, I just pile up basically on a plate or something. It's as simple to do. See how paper thin it is. Can you? Really paper thin. But in the meantime, you can just slide one to the side, just flip it. That one's not quite ready to do. But while they're cooking away, all you're going to do now just carry on, make another one. I meant to get some um, silicone, so you know, some silicone mats so I could work with them instead of uh, keep using this uh, parchment paper. But as you know, we're on lockdown and uh, I really don't want to go outside. Uh, continue about the keto. Um, I don't know how many of you know, but I am diabetic for type 1. So, since I've been on keto, my uh, A1C, 
I think it's the same in America. It's come down to I think 6.3 from what was it? I think the worst time it was about 14 or something. So you know, it's, it it is it's definitely working for me. And I've lost around about just slightly under 30 pounds. So which I needed. I need that for the operation on my knee. So it's all good. I think most of you will know what keto is or not. Basically you're cutting out the carbs as much as you can do. Um, because carbs just turn back into sugar basically. And it always goes onto your stomach. Oh, mainly on your stomach, should I say. That's why you end up with your jelly belly, like I've got. But that part of that's done to be diabetes anyway. So, can't blame it all on, on beer and uh, fast food. In fact, I, I very rarely eat fast food. I haven't done for the last couple of years. Might treat myself once a month. Um, that was until I started this keto um, and I haven't really done that. We've been out for meals and I've just looked like chicken and bacon salad. So if you haven't heard of keto you're thinking bacon? Yep, you can. You can eat eggs, bacon, sausages, steaks, all the things that you're not supposed to eat on a, a regular calorie, calorie control diet. Um, it's basically it's less calories and more good fats. So what people have told me before about eating fats is going to make you really fat and that's the reason why you put all this weight on uh, and watch your calories, that'll do it. Uh, basically it's the carbs. Just cut out the carbs you'll lose weight, I can guarantee it. So, what I'm saying, when you're cutting the carbs down so much, not have any sugar if you can help it. I mean, there's nothing on your cereal, anything like that, or in your coffee. I mean, you, you get natural carbs in, like your vegetables and things like that. Um, you can't have fruit. Um, I don't really miss, not really, um, fruits have got too many carbs in them, it's all natural sugars, so I know it's natural but it's still sugars, so not. you can have um, berries, so strawberries, raspberries, blueberries, um, blackberries, Whatever you want, whatever berries you want, uh, you just gotta watch out for the how many carbs you're having, basically. Um, you can have things like broccoli within reason, because uh, broccoli is about four carbs, and you're looking to have about something like 20 carbs a day. That one's a bit thick, but doesn't matter. You're looking to about 20 carbs a day. Whereas before this diet, I was, I was having about 70, 80 carbs per meal. So, yeah, not good for you. So anyway, I'll just flip that one back over. That's doing nicely, that's doing nicely, that's doing nicely. Just leave them a couple more minutes. I really need to put a cloth or something under this because it's sliding all over. But I think you've got the gist by right now. What's it makes around about this recipe where I've just done now? As you see, it's like four lots of it in one go. And that'll make about 50 of these. Um, 
what I did last time when I made 50, I froze half of them. Well, no, in fact, I, I split them into about four bags. So I kept one out and I froze the rest of them. Um, all you need to do is just take them out of the freezer, let them defrost overnight. Or if you want to put them in, in the toaster, frozen, they, they're okay. There's no problem there. Um, they're really good to have with things like curry uh, or even your salads, anything what you want to eat basically. Just have it like you would like a piece of bread or something like that. I mean, I could, I've had sandwiches with them. Um, they're really good. I've had uh, melted cheese on them. They're really good. Oh, well, wet cheese. Uh, I know it's high in fat, but you allow cheese on this diet. So, if you're a cheese lover and you want to lose weight and you love your steaks and everything, this is a date for you. So, right, uh, that's the first batch done. Then, just look how, how bendy they are, how flexible. So you can use them as tortillas or whatever you want to. So that's the first three made. So I'm just going to put these over here. I'm going to finish off doing a few more here and then I'll get back to you. So here we are, as you can see they're very flexible, you can use them just as breads or use them as a taco or something like that, let's see. Um, I mean I was sort of practicing something different, I've done a few different shapes, like a, a rectangle or oblong, whichever you want to call it, they're still as flexible. And I've put some cumin seeds in these ones. Um, I've just tried these and they're very nice. So that's it. So they're easy to make. These ones, if you're doing paper thin like I've been doing, they work out. Let me check. The calories are about 26, the carbs around about 1.8, the fibre is 3.3. The protein is 1 and the fat is 1.9, call it 2. So, um, regarding net carbs, I've got 1.8 carbs, and then a fiber of 3.3. So, make what you will of that is it 1.8 carbs or do you take the 3.3 away, which will leave minus 1.5. 
uh, yeah, leave me some feedback about that. Let me know what you think. And let me know what you think about them. Okay, thanks a lot. Okay, let's try one of these bad boys. I'm using one of the rabs, as you can see. And then he's just wrapping it up. Put it into this egg master. There we go. All we do is wait. Yum yum.